So I thought we'd take a quick peek at some uh, clock oscillator modules. These are recovered from uh, old motherboards, computer motherboards, or possibly uh, from some video cards as well. Uh, these ones here operate at 40 megs, most of them 16 megahertz, uh, one of them's one point something, and uh, the one that I have here and active right now is 11.142 on the cover of it. And uh, here's some of the basics of it. The pin configuration here, when you look on the bottom of these, the pin configuration, and there's a square edge here. So I'm going to put this little square edge up where that square edge represents right up there. Uh, the 14 pin dip size, so you can plug this into one of your uh, proto boards, but you have to be careful because the pins aren't all that long and depending on how your little proto board is constructed, uh, the pins may not go down far enough to actually enter the little the little clips that are on the inside of here. So you think your little modules all bad and everything and all that turns out is that it just didn't quite make it all the way down to the pins. You can I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but some of them are pretty short. So it may not be the may not actually be faulty. It just might try a different proto board, different manufacturer might have their little uh, clips up higher. So we can see here that uh, there's no connection. This is the square corner here. There's no connection here and this pin just basically isn't used. And uh, the ground is the case as well. Uh, you can often see this one here is, uh, if you look at it, there's no insulator around the pin as it goes into the case. It just attaches right to the case. Output is right here. And we have five, plus 5 volts DC put in on this side. It doesn't get much easier than this to make an oscillator, to get an oscillator going. You just put some voltage to it as we can see on this one here. And um, works pretty well. Um, what we're going to have a look at on the scope here is uh, this situation. It's not as nice and square as this. It's a little uglier on the scope because this isn't properly, um, uh, it isn't properly terminated. I've only got a 100 ohm resistor going across here to try and give it some help to take, get rid of some of the peaks that you're going to shortly see on the oscilloscope. Um, and at, at that 100 ohm load, we're getting about 2.6 volts on the positive side here. For the peaks. Uh, with no load on this we get 3.6 volts. This uh, this comes up a little bit but it's also a little bit uglier but it doesn't really make a lot of difference for a lot of situations anyways. If you put this through like a Schmidt trigger or something it would clean that up kind of nicely. So let's go have a look at it on the scope. We can see here that uh, we got a bit of ripple both ways. It goes to the peak and overshoots a tiny bit it looks like. We got some ripple going on it goes back down to not quite zero and we can see we have a little bit of ripple down here but considering how easy this is to do and it's this is a measurement here 11.1415 megs megahertz and it's rated at 11.142 so it's fairly close these are not the these are not a crystal you know temperature controlled oscillator sort of thing they're plus or minus 100 parts per million and um, it just gives you an easy to make square wave and uh, you know divide it down or do whatever you need to do and uh, get a get a square wave for your project